Hello everyone and welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I can't quite decide whether I want to go interplanetary with a probe or launch our first crewed mission. And right now we don't really have a window for anything. Mars is behind us, Venus is ahead of us, and such things like that. So it's not an opportune time, but in order to do crew stuff we need to at least get enhanced survivability. So yeah, I've moved that up and we'll delay electric since I found out we have the CubeSat panels, which for a crude mission would not be good, but uh, for probes will be fine. And we will see when we finish things up and whether we first get enhanced survivability or we first get an opportunity to go somewhere else. I'm expecting that maybe Venus will catch up with us. I think it's 54 degrees behind is what we want. It's a pretty close call between enhanced survivability and that. Uh, it's sort of a tie. <laughs> um, I think we can go for Venus first. Let's see our contracts. We're about 12 days away from enhanced survivability though. Anyway, flyby contracts, Venus flyby. Okay, well let's pick that up and try that out. First Karman crude. I mean, I don't know what why they're waiting for that, but I might have to fix that contract before even doing the crude one. Or we could just get them orbital. I mean, why waste time, really? But we'll need a larger rocket for that. Okay, but first, Venus. I suppose one thing we could do before we plunge ahead with Venus is buy some more points and hurry things up a little bit more. Point three signs per day there. And 2.4 build points per second now. So that'll be quicker. We do have some science to spend, but I think we want to get six more points so that we can at least get to the Lynx Neo spacecraft so we don't have to use the Mark 1 pod constantly. Maybe not at all, <laughs> if I could help it. So, anyway, Venus. So I figure it's appropriate to use the photon interplanetary stage because, after all, um, Ro Rocket Lab is actually going to try and use this to get to Venus. So that would be a good thing to use it for. And it by default has MH and Mont 3. And now that we've done general rocketry, I think it was, we've got this one kilonewton uh, hypergolic thruster. And this one, uh, it, so pr previously we had a one kilonewton that only did hydrazine and monopropellants. This is a bipropellant one. And so we're going to unlock that and that will go better with this. So a little bit of a big nozzle, but pressure fed, feed pressure okay. And let's see. Because we upped the speed of our technology acquirement, uh, we've cut it down to only seven days. I want to get rid of that build list, but okay, whatever. Okay, so we don't have any payload on this. We probably want some more solar panels, judging from the previous things. Gonna tuck that in a little bit. And but yeah, five thousand meters per second right now. I think we should send some goo over. That might be over optimistic though. Um, two goo. Eh, that's pushing it. Maybe one goo. And more solar panels. Ah, I forgot. The solar panels still need to be moved from structural. And that should help. And yeah, let's get the accelerometer. Not two of them. And thermometer. Well, that seems like a science tour de force right there. Oh, but we need comms. Well, I think I built this with the comms that such a trip would require because of course they would have that. Um, no, it doesn't seem... Eight, 8 million kilometers doesn't seem like enough and we're not at level 3 so maybe I didn't build it with enough. Maybe I was expecting to use uh, additional antenna. 25.3 million kilometers would be good but uh, it looks like this direct one, 80 million kilometers, is a little bit more buffer if it so happens that Venus and Earth are not, like, right close to each other. So, 
if Venus and Earth are close to each other, well, we're not at level 3 DSN yet, so we probably need, need this one. It's combinable, so that's good. So I do think that Mars would be a stretch, actually. And we need more than one helix antenna. These are CubeSat antennae. Okay, so we've got two of those. And they are not relay antennae. But they are more powerful than our relays. I don't know if Helix antennae are actually good or not. <laughs> um, let's hope. Still seems good on a Delta V. Not too sure about this Echo. I mean, we probably need it. This one had three ether engines here. And they seem to be okay there. And then the two reaver engines down here. I think I want more RCS thrusters on here. A previous port was just a mod propellant port, so it could only do uh, hydrazine, HTP, nitrous oxide, helium, and nitrogen. This one is also a monopropellant port, but I don't really want... I mean, our existing ports on here are bipropellant. Oh, uh, nope, this block is also monopropellant. So, yeah, I think we will not complicate matters and just use the RCS ports we've got. We don't have a whole lot on here. It's really just enough for turning a little. <laughs> and we can't even push down really. This has 40 ignitions. No throttling. Okay, I'm just gonna call it Photon. And this was the Echo. And we will try after I make sure that the staging is right to send it to Venus. 29 days to build. Oh shucks! We'll be past the window by then. I forgot. We have to be ahead of the window. We should have built the rocket ahead of time. Gosh, I didn't even think about that for... I mean, because we haven't done the interplanetary stuff, I completely forgot that with Kerbal Construction Time, you need to build the rocket way ahead of the window. Hmm, 30 days. Maybe we should go to Mars or something. <laughs> well, let's see. We don't really have time for, well, maybe we have time for the next window, but the contract only gives us two years. I mean, it's possible that we could still launch. It's a little bit close. I wonder how much science transmitting goo readings from around Earth would give us. Would it be enough for the better pods? Okay, well, we should probably line up with the moon because that's always good as a reference for the ecliptic. Or at least it's the best we can do as a reference for the ecliptic. That should be good enough. All right, throttle up, SAS on, ignition. And launch. And reminds me that maybe we should prepare multiple of these in case, like, one of the engines messes up or something. Didn't I have a prettier one? I think I made a better looking rocket. I just used the subassembly this time. But I think I improved the look of things too. Well, we should be through the worst of the dynamic pressure. Eight minute upper stage though. Okay, preparing for staging. No, oh, that's a higher apoapsis than I wanted. Okay, staging and ignition and fairings. That said, the thrust weight ratio here is awful low. Still, we've got tons of delta V. These do have restarts, so we can get them to help for our transfer. We might even get into orbit around Venus. I mean, if we can get to Venus at all. 
Well, we might as well get those antennae out. Well, one thing being in a high orbit helps out with is that we have good line of sight with the various communication spots. So, given that we have a very long burn here, it's a little bit safer. Okay, shut down. So we are in orbit. It is a somewhat awkward orbit, but you'll be fine. <laughs> so let's target Venus and see if things can work out. We will use Maneuver Planner from MechJeb. I don't have Transfer Window Planner here. Um, no, this is different than usual. I just want lowest delta V. No, ASAP. I want ASAP. Create node. All right, well, it seems to be doable. Uh, that looks like an encounter to me. 98 days. Yep, okay. Let's see if we can make it happen. Looks like we have to wait basically in orbit until we can go. Comms will be an issue at our planned burn point. We'll see. Okay, node, node. So let's take a look here. Oh, we're approaching the west coast anyway. Yep, we've got a line through to Vandenberg and our maneuver is like basically right over, well, at the same longitude, so. Okay. All right, ignition. I'll just have everything start up on decoupling for the next stage. Okay, we don't want those RCS thrusters punching into the photon stage. Separation. Uh-oh. There we go. Shoot. <laughs> that staging didn't work quite right. Okay, but we are safe. Seems like it can recharge. I don't suppose there's science to be done here. No, no. The goo will wait until we get to Venus. Since it seems like that is possible. There is a chance that this engine can fail, though the meantime before failure on such an engine is, you know, long. And its rated burn time is long too. It is just the one kill Newton thruster. Well, I can see Houston from here. Okay, we are on escape. Let's see now. Oh, uh, I don't think I can get a good view on it. Uh, nope, we got an encounter though. Focus. Okay, well now the bit where we don't really have a bottom facing thruster is gonna hurt a little bit. Gonna have to fire the engine again. Uh, twice, but we've got 40 ignitions. We should do a uh, mid-course adjustment, I think. I guess if we want to get some good science, we should just go polar with it. We have to be within 20,000 kilometers. That's not a problem, but technically we should try and get close for extra science. But we also want to make sure that we can maintain a communication line. I think that'll be enough. Actually, high over Venus, I don't even know where it is, where the line is. Of course, with Earth, it's at 35,000 kilometers, so it's fairly forgiving. Getting into orbit will cost too much. We don't have enough for orbit. Us 2,600, maybe a very, very loose orbit. I feel like that might not actually be in orbit. <laughs> uh, that might be within our range, but I don't know if that Maybe, maybe that apoapsis is still in orbit. We'll see. Okay, so we can't do any new science. We don't really have anything to queue then because I want the pods. All right, we'll just let basic science happen and we will time warp with this. We seem to be recharging. Out we go. Okay, we are in solar orbit now. 
We have good comms, good power, and not what I wanted to do. Okay. Ah, we have a possibility of a temperature scan and the gravity scan. Okay, well, now we can get the, the Lynx spacecraft instead of using the Mark 1 pod. Let me quickly go to the research center. I mean, basic science is nice and all. You get the science junior and everything, but I want simple command modules. It's going to take some time, too. So I'm going to move that up. And we'll work on that. Okay, turning to the node. And ignition. And shut down. Should be close enough, right? Or too close. <laughs> A little bit too close. Um, this is not the direction I should be burning in, but and kill rotation. Just turn kill rotation off. So, because the RCS thrusters are not bottom facing, they sort of roll into a good periapsis, but it's all right. It'll get enough power, I think. Let's see. Yeah, it'll recharge even though it's got this tumble. We'll call it a barbecue roll. It's not quite in the right axis, but seems like the comm lines are pretty green. But Venus is on the same side as Earth, is the best possible situation. Well, let me see Venus there. We're not quite in the SOI yet, but we are approaching. We have the proper periapsis, so we'll just keep time warping here. I guess we could do some quick science while we can. Okay, 15 for a temperature scan. And 30 for a gravity scan over the highlands space, high over the highlands of a Venus. I might have to look at the science notifications to correct that. A Venus, not the Venus. Well, 20,000 kilometers was what the contract wanted. Okay, Venus flyby fulfilled. And we're still high over Venus. At least we're over Midlands now. More science. So, how close do we have to get before we are near Venus? Thought I'd go with the contract height, but apparently not. Signal strength 89%. So maybe Mars could be doable. Still in space high. Much tighter around Venus than Earth. Okay, do we have a line back? Seems that way. Once we pass periapsis, it might be a problem though. So, science. Now we're near Venus. Got a bunch of extra science there. We will try to get into orbit. See what happens. Oh, let's do the goo. Uh, probably we'd have to recover it though. This is a test of that. No, we got 12 science. Let's just go ahead with that. Okay, here we go. Attempting to capture. in a very, very high orbit. Eh, let's check more science. Yes, Midlands we had not done. Let's transmit that. Okay, what is the verdict about possible capture here? Wouldn't be able to reorient to face the sun though. Uh, that seems a little bit high. Okay, well, that's what we've got. That is not a capture. 
so we did not quite make it. Still above Midlands. And we've lost contact because we were on the opposite side of Venus from Earth. Okay, we've regained contact. And we do have lowlands in space high over the lowlands. So we can transmit that. I think that'll do it for this little probe. So it has done its thing. Let's go back to the Space Center. So I'm eagerly trying to get the Lynx spacecraft, but right now our rocket can carry, you know, 300, 400 kilograms to orbit or something like that. We need something, if we've got the heat shield here, the aero cap, the actual cabin, and the shell, we are talking about more than five tons, more like six tons. And we're going to have to shove out a lot of money to pay for that. Uh, can we build a rocket that can carry six tons? Let me see. We did unlock some new engines. Uh, I don't know. Let me take a good look at our engines and try to figure that out. Go with uh, It's a four meter spacecraft. And... We will temporarily... I like Avgas. That's uh, not quite what I want. Let's go with six... T well, we might want some sort of service module. So let's say seven tons. Seven tons at least. Okay, so that's our spacecraft. Launch escape system. <laughs> uh, will we have a launch? No, I... I don't know if we've unlocked. We'll have to come up with something. Maybe we can use the tiny Tims for once or something. We've got a lot of little solid rockets. I feel like this decoupler can probably be sized up. Procedural decoupler, can we go to four meters? Yes, okay, that's fine too then. But now we need a four meter stage. And what engine can we put on it? What's our most powerful engine right now? Oh, SC2020, that's a sure strut engine. That's 235. 235 is about all we've got. I don't know if that's orbital quality. We'll need a lot of them. We do have the ability to create solid rocket motors of undefined hugeness. Uh, I don't like that idea. Oh, I totally forgot. I was starting to mock this up, but we can't manage with a 40 ton limit, I don't think. Uh, let's see. Crude mock-up. Maybe I should make like a New Glenn sort of suborbital thing. That would make it easier. Anyway, let's see how much the pad improvement will cost. But that still means... Well, I think it was fairly generous. Yeah, 800 tons. So we'll get that queued up. Uh, which will happen first? Uh, the launch pad upgrade will be done in time for the simple command modules there. Okay, snag number two. Our fairings are still limited to 1.5 meters. Hmm... Is that all of them? Yep. We're going to perhaps need to change that. This is going to work out. Uh, for now, just to see if this is possible, I'm going to go fairingless. Okay, well, even setting this tank to just six tons, if we've got a stage like this with the SE-2006Vs, and these are engines that produce 62.1 kilonewton and 357 second specific impulse of kerosene and oxygen. So they're sort of like the the Buran engines kind of thing, or uh, that class, the RS58. Uh, oh, sorry, RD58. Uh, we've got five of those up there, and then we have nine of these SC2020s. And these have 235.3 kilonewtons at 343, also kerosene. Uh, this is not enough delta V yet. We're at 141 tons. So with 
even 200 tons they'll be all right this is a little bit awkward looking um but now i'll have to think about what we want to do about this right now it is i'll just save this for now just as a reminder but uh, we're trying to get to orbit with that and i don't know if we've got the best engines we've got a lot of science though thanks to venus so i think we really 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 need advanced rocketry at which point we get you now that engine has 910 kilonewtons which would be much nicer than a whole bunch of 250 kilonewton engines so we get much more serious engines here let's research that i gotta figure out about the fairings maybe it's because of stability let's let's get stability and see if that unlocks better fairing sizes because that's a little bit further back and maybe that is where we get better fairing sizes we'll see maybe it's under general construction okay and so technology wise i want to get an answer to the fairing thing first so we'll do st stability first and we might as well get advanced rocketry before simple command modules because I don't think we're going to be able to launch the Lynx spacecraft, the small Lynx, without better engines. We might be able to do something with the Mark 1 pod, we'll think about that. But uh, yeah, so that is how we're going to plan it. And we can get more science, but I haven't decided what I need yet. So this is where I'll leave it here, and next time we'll, long, we'll look to launch a crude pod, but we're probably going to have to time warp a whole bunch again. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.